Hi everyone, in this video I'll talk about the Kite Runner by Khalid Husseini and explain the Hazara Pashtun conflict and why this novel has a major flaw that nobody really is talking about. First, let me summarize the story. Two teenage boys are at the heart of this story. During a kite flying contest in Kabul in the 1970s, Hassan, a servant boy from Hazara ethnic group, helps Amir, an affluent Pashtun, to win. But later that day, Amir watches as some Pashtun boys rape Hassan due to his ethnicity. Amir is too scared to help, but he carries this guilt for 30 years. He moves to America, builds a life there, and gets married, but this guilt remains inside despite him trying to forget it. When he gets a phone call from an old friend, he has no choice but to confront his past by returning to the country to rescue Hassan's son, the little boy called Sorab, to atone his betrayal. The story is very uplifting, it's about being true to yourself, you should confront your past mistakes. In that sense, it's a very powerful tale of a hero's internal journey in three stages, mistake, guilt and redemption. I teared up many times as I read it. It's a deeply emotional novel, beautifully told and the language very simple. If one analyzes a bit more closely, it's too melodramatic and over simplistic. But that doesn't stop the reader enjoying the novel. The internal conflict of Amir drives the main plot, but the conflict between Hazaras and Pashtuns, the two ethnic groups, is central to the story. In order to understand this novel, it's critical to understand the socio-cultural background to the story. I think the Kite Runner has a major flaw when it comes to depicting this ethnic conflict. Afghanistan is a multi-ethnic with four major ethnic groups. The population is about 40% Pashtun, mostly in the south and east, 25% Tajik and 15% Hazara, mostly in central Afghanistan, and 10% Uzbek. The number of Hazara is disputed, so some estimates put them 10% and some 19%, 10% as a middle ground. Two main languages in Afghanistan, with the 50% of the population speaking Persian, called Dari, and 40% Pashto and 10% Uzbeki, which is a Turkic language. Afghanistan is a Muslim country with 80% Sunni and 20% Shia. Now, if we compare Hazara and Pashtun side by side, we understand the socio-cultural root of the conflict. Pashtuns are Sunni, as is 80% of the country's population. Global Muslim population is also said to be 85% Sunni and 15% Shia. And Hazara, on the other hand, are the de facto Shia group in the country, which is quite an anomaly. It was the Iranian Safavid king who is said to have converted the Hazaras to Shia Islam in the 16th century. Successive Pashtun kings and the Taliban justified the attack on the Hazaras based on religion as they saw them as heretics. Still, Hazaras are targeted by the ISIS and Taliban specifically for the same reason. Another major difference between Pashtun and Hazara is their look. Hazaras with more Asiatic features appear to be Mongolian Turkic mixture with narrower eyes, larger cheekbones, smaller nose, and generally smaller stature. Pashtuns, on the other hand, blend in with the Tajiks, Iranians, and Pakistanis, and other South Asians and Middle Easterns. This has led many Pashtun rulers to believe that Hazaras don't belong in the country. Some suggest that Pashtun kings and Taliban used religious heresy as an excuse for their racist agenda to massacre Hazaras. As we can see in the Kite Runner, race plays a central role as all the insults are about Hassan's facial features such as his nose. The character of Asif, an Aryan Nazi supremacist, is prominent in the story, who bizarrely becomes a Taliban member at the end, quite Hollywoody. A third difference, perhaps as important as race and religion, is the language. Hazaras, along with 50% of the population, speak Dari, which is the same as Persian or Farsi in Iran, while Pashtuns speak Pashto. Dari also functions lingua franca in major cities, as much as 80% of the population speak it, pushing Pashto as a minority language, except in the south. Dari and Pashto are like French and English, close but not close enough. This too has fueled the conflict as Hazar and Pashtun cannot effectively communicate with each other. It's harder to fight with someone who you can talk to. In the novel, Hassan's favorite book is the Persian epic tale of Shahnama, written in 10th century by Fedosi. Nowadays, the language debate is a really hot topic in Afghanistan, as Pashtuns are fighting back against the dominance of Persian, like the French speakers in Canada. Now, despite these socio-cultural differences, I think it's history that is at the heart of this conflict. The Pashtun king Abdul Rahman carried out genocide of the Hazaras in 1890s, wiping as much as 60% of Hazara population. Some fled to Pakistan. To this day, there's a large community in Quetta who are also under attack by Sunni extremist groups in Pakistan. Hundred years later, in the 1990s, Taliban also Pashtun massacred Hazaras. Even now, the ISIS routinely target Hazaras. Having said that, this conflict isn't all 
Cloud War. For the most part, Hazaras and Pashtuns get on well. It has always been the rulers who exploited the ethnic, religious, and linguistic differences for their own benefits. For the most part, anyway. How about other ethnic groups in Afghanistan? Well, since they are all Sunni Muslims, they have morally supported the Pashtuns against Hazaras. But in recent years, loyalties have shifted around. For instance, Tajiks, Uzbeks and Hazaras united against the Taliban. But Tajiks and Hazaras have also clashed in the past due to the racial and religious differences. But since they speak the same language, Persian, it's easier to get along than fight. Uzbeks too, being a Turkic minority, felt racially close to the Hazaras but their religious loyalties tend to be with the Sunni Pashtuns. All these ethnic groups have a country outside Afghanistan that back them, perhaps mostly morally than financially. Pashtuns have Pakistan, Tajiks have Tajikistan and Uzbeks have Uzbekistan in Turkey, while Hazaras don't have a country called Hazaristan, but traditionally they were allied with Iran, both being Shia Muslims. However, Hazaras being of Mongolian descent, the whole Islamic region see them as the son of Genghis Khan the man who destroyed the Islamic Golden Age. There might be an underlying mistrust of the Hazaras among the Iranians too. The Kite Runner depicts Hazaras as passive, submissive and with physical disability, for example Hassan's hair lip and Ali's lame leg and Hazaras flat nose. So two things stand out, their physical shortcomings and their mental submissiveness. In other words, Hazara characters are mostly flat, while Pashtun characters, especially Amir, Baba, and Rahim Khan, are all round, i.e., capable of change as they betray, reflect, and redeem themselves. While Ali and Hassan, on the other hand, toil on without complaint, with the naivety and honesty of a child. They put up with their terrible world. Now the question is, are Hazaras like Husseini portrays them, victims, submissive and physically disabled? The answer is no. In the 19th century they staged many uprisings and in 1933 a young Hazara called Khalid assassinated the Pashtun king for undoing the reforms of the previous king who had achieved in modernizing Afghanistan. In 1980s, there was a Hazara Prime Minister. Even in 1970s, the setting of this novel, Hazaras were in constant battle with the central government over taxation. And Hazaras were prominent in the leftist movement in Kabul. Khalid Husseini himself, a Pashtun or half Pashtun, brought the plight of Hazaras to the fore, which is commendable. Now more people are aware of their persecution, but his clumsy characterization of them as paper cut cartoons somewhat stifled their voices and made them victims. Throughout the novel, I found no voice of dissent by a Hazara against their plight. It's not unreasonable to suggest that Khalid Husseini himself carries a subconscious bias or perhaps he is trying to weave a fairy tale. For a novel, three elements are essential, reader, subject and author. When the subject is real people but not familiar to the reader, the author has a duty to portray the subject as accurately as possible, otherwise he's creating a false picture. Most western readers took what was on the pages of the kite runner as truth and saw Hassan and Ali representing the Hazara community in being submissive victims. Some news newspapers even suggested that Hazaras were lower caste in Afghanistan. Hazaras throughout their history has had rich and poor, nobility and peasants. Simply being a Hazara, despite putting you at a disadvantage, didn't automatically make you a lower class. For example, if one writes about women or depict black characters as nothing but submissive victims, publisher as well as readers would see through the badly drawn characters and too simplistic plot. But when it comes to the Pashtun Hazara conflict, because it's too unknown to the audience it was intended, it gets published and becomes a bestseller. Hazars are proud people, but in the novel according to Muhammad Muhammadi, famous novelist from Afghanistan, they saw themselves nothing but submissive and physically disabled, which is a misrepresentation. It's like in Jane Eyre by Charlie Bronte, the mad woman in the attic has no voice, has no chance to tell her story, which was rectified by Jean Rhys a hundred years later in White Sardagossa Sea to tell her side and how colonialism characterized her as other. Pity and sympathy are two distinct things. Most Hazaras felt the subject of pity in this book. We feel sympathy towards Amir for his courage to confront his past. But Ali and Hassan's stories break your heart. They are too good, too selfless. Talking to readers, I can see that most people pitied the Hazaras, their situation portrayed so bad that made it unimaginable. Perhaps it wasn't Husseini's intention to depict Hazaras as victims, but it does appear that he is boasting the Pashtun's status as the dominant group, especially the character of Baba as larger than a live person, whom I actually dislike the most. I still love this book despite its shortcomings. I guess a work of literature has to be judged on its emotional and social merits. It surpasses in its emotional impact but doesn't deliver 
deliver on its social impact. This doesn't mean one shouldn't tackle social issues in a novel, but if you cannot capture the essence of the situation, you leave the reader to do everything. Perhaps that is too much. It's the author's job to do due diligence to fight his or her own prejudices and bias. It appears Khalid Hosseini rushed in writing this novel. He published it two years after September 11th, an American attack on the Taliban in 2001. If you look closely, the plot of this story is very similar to the American involvement in Afghanistan. The CIA created the Taliban and Al-Qaeda in 1980s to fight the USSR, a mistake they understood 20 years later when they attacked New York. Then the Americans returned in 2011 to rectify their mistake by toppling the Taliban, the monster the CIA had helped to create. Amir betrays his friend in 1970s and returns in 2001 to amend his mistake by rescuing and bringing the victim's child to America. I think Khalid Hosseini's parallel story is a deliberate choice and made the story an easier sale for the American publishers as it fitted the mood of the American people as the good guys. I hope I haven't been too negative. As I said, I love this book, so I made this video to clarify the cultural background to the story. I hope it helps you have a better understanding of the book. I think only readers can decide whether Hazaris are the subject of pity or sympathy in the Kite Runner. Let me know how you felt about the Hazaris while reading it. Thank you.